the project started when Wouter and I, we had our studio in the WTC Tower. Uh, it was 2017 and we've been working together for a few years already on different projects about the politics behind space making. Um, not specifically in Brussels, but uh, not, speci not always specifically about Brussels. And then uh, when we had our studio there, um, the, the towers were actually completely empty uh, or almost empty. And then, um, yeah, 2017, 2018, we started to see that things are changing around us um, in the area, but also especially in the towers. Um, the, before the, the, the WTC towers were owned by uh, different owners and now Befimo uh, became the sole owner. And uh, together with uh, uh, the municipalities, they decided to completely redynamize the Northern Quarter. Um, and for this, they started working together with uh, different architectural uh, organizations and parties like 51M4E, uh, Architecture Work Room Brussels, um, and all these parties moved into the towers, but also other parties like uh, St. Lucas Architecture, but also they invited artists to rent a studio for uh, a small amount of money in exchange that they would do something or add something to the neighborhood. And Wouter and I witnessed all of this and we, it felt really uh, soapy also because people were sharing elevators, having like little talks. We, it felt as if um, deals were being made and um, yeah, uh, one sort of like theater spectacle in one tower. Uh, and we were also especially interested in the role that these or, uh, architectural organizations were taking in. So they said, instead of just criticizing it from, yeah, from a distance, maybe we can work together to see what we can change uh, when we take a seat at the table. Um, and we were interested, but also a bit skeptical about this position. So this was our first, this was all, this, this, these were our, our opinions and our concerns. And then um, a friend of ours, uh, uh, Christopher Rot, he started a, a te television canal and he asked us if we wanted to make a, smart, a short film for this, or a short movie. And we'd never done anything like this and we thought, okay, wait, what if we make a trailer for uh, for a film about the redevelopment of the Northern Quarter. And we called it VTC, a love story. So we made a short trailer with our iPhones. And then we hang posters all around the building saying like casting, uh, looking for actors. Uh, uh, and then the rumor started spreading or we started spreading the rumor that we were going to make a film about this transition. And we were just very interested what it would do to the existing debate if we would, yeah, yeah, start if we would just propose this uh, this this intervention. Pretend that but, there would be a film. Yeah, yeah. and then what was, it was very interesting that everyone everyone started coming to us, uh, questioning about this film, uh, telling us that they would like to be part of it. Maybe we wanted to interview them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe they could invest in it. Yeah, that's also that the, such proposals <laughs> also happened. Um, so what we then realized was that this, this whole transition was so much about image building and about how people wanted to be perceived, how this area should be perceived, but also how they as uh, progressive architecture, architects should be perceived, etc. Uh, and then I think after a few months of like just interviewing people with a borrowed camera and not having any funding to actually make a film, we decided, okay, let's do it and let's focus on how everyone wants to be portrayed and how can we like, intensify or accelerate that even more than by giving them an actor um, so they can really explain themselves in a way um, like how they want to be seen. Um, Mag Pascal Smet, staatssecretaris stedenbouw, internationale betrekkingen, Europese betrekkingen ook. En patrimonium. Patrimonium, ja. En de brandweer. Ja. Een heel cultuur, sport, jee. Yeah. <laughs> Vandaag gaan we het hebben over de Noordwijk. Ik ga proberen zoveel mogelijk te weten te komen over jou en jouw plannen met de Noordwijk. I'm uh, Davis Freeman and I'll be playing you. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet me. Nee. <laughs> um, so in a way the second film, well, the start of the second film really continues where the first film kind of ends. So we also try to work again with this method of having people brief actors. Um, 
in a way to sort of stir up an existing debate, etc. But then this time we actually want to use these actors not to create a critical mirror, but to try to sort of negotiate for these different social organizations to find a common ground to maybe uh, start working together in what we call a social coalition. What we find out then is uh, multiple things actually, but also one of the things about our, our methodology is that we find out that this is a very interesting way to sort of break open power dynamics and also bring people who are in, in, in comfortable um, and powerful positions, uh, take them out of their comfort zone and also uh, yeah, sort of destabilize them. People um, who are very much invested in their image building themselves. Yeah, but also who have control over their own, own narrative normally. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden they kind of haven't. And with these social organizations that we work in in the beginning of the second film, they're actually in very precarious situations. They also have, they don't have a, like a very one, a uh, very linear or, or um, stable definition of what they stand for. They have this big group that they have to represent and it's much more nuanced and complex. So adding another layer of like actors and, 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 and fiction to the table then it doesn't really help the situation so much we found. <laughs> so this is one like learning uh, point I think for us that we also demonstrate in the film. And then another one is um, that whereas maybe in the first film we try to show how fiction can help um, to sort of uh, think further, etc. In the second film, I would mostly I would say actually that the function of fiction is to show to to um, show how complex so to to show how simple uh, simple a fiction can be actually functions to, to demonstrate how complex the reality is. Je crains que d'abord hier tu dois y aller, non Ou oui, pas encore désolé. Merci beaucoup d'être euh, Moi aussi je ne vais pas temps. devoir tarder, parce que oui. j'ai réunion aussi à 18h. Ok. Sorry. <laughs> non, ça va être compliqué, mais nous sommes venus de many différents routes, paths, réalités, et... You're trying to bring all of that on one single sidewalk or road, and it's, I mean, it's a real challenge. Si tu, moi, tu me prends individuellement et tu me dis qu'est-ce que tu irais dire à un tel ou comment tu fonctionnerais, c'est OK. Et je peux te dire très clairement comment, comment je rencontrerais des pouvoirs publics et, comment, euh, et, et ce que je leur dirais, et même tout le bien ou tout le mal que je peux penser des autres organisations, de ce qu'elles font. Donc je peux le faire si c'est moi qui, qui dois aller le faire. Mm -hmm. Si je dois représenter une entité ou, ou je, dois, je dois prendre un avis pour un groupe, pour, pour tellement de réalités, il n'y a pas de briefing pour ça. Enfin, je ne sais mm. pas comment le dire autrement, c'est très compliqué, ouais. c'est réducteur en fait. Le topic of the films is really this very specific urban um, transformation, but at the same time, I think since we both come from it from such different interests and, 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 and worlds, um, we are just mostly very interested in in uh, just the political dynamics that are behind it and just the, the, the sort of the questions around resistance and activism uh, that are very concretely played out in this situation. Yeah. Um, I think it's really unique, like I don't know any film that talks about resistance in such a um, subtle way. Like, I don't know any film that is not, where it just doesn't say like, ah, it's like this or it's like that. No, it really, it shows like, ah, maybe it's like this, ah, maybe it's like that. I think that's really a, a big achievement. <laughs> Selling our film. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I think what's maybe also good to mention is that uh, there's a very, there's a reason why we never in both films, even in the last one that is so much about uh, people who are resisting, uh, that we don't work with inhabitants of the area uh, or maybe it's not that we that that's like a rule but that we we are specifically interested in people that work for organizations representing something defending something etc um, because yeah most this because this it interests us these structures of of, uh, of, of, of yeah this sort of institutionalized uh, ways of working and also to there see how uh, how complex this is and also how strongly tied to political, um, uh, how do you say, uh, belangen? Interests. Interests. Mm -hmm. um, 
another reason for this is also that we are interested to see how we can, yeah, this is our sort of cultural field and our, mm. uh, this is our, the same class and um, how can we use our also cultural and, and elitist capital in a way to, to enter these worlds and, uh, yeah, and, and, and try to play with them. Um, yeah, contribute yeah, into yeah. the debate, influence. Yeah. Contribute, but also more sneaky, like... Yeah. <laughs> um, manipulate. Yeah, manipulate and just play with this world. Our statement is kind of, okay, history is repeating itself. So um, in the 70s, a uh, lively area was destroyed for, to just for the projection of a new vision. Same thing is happening now. But I think a di big difference is that back then, it was very clear. So you had the politicians and the private parties and there was no puha. It was just straight on pure violence also. Like reading this book that we, um, that we work with, with Albert Martens, there are horrible stories. It's really clear violence. Yeah. But then what's hap the way it's happening now, um, it's it's much vaguer, and that's also I think we want what we wanted to show in the first film is there's this whole this whole feel of of social and participatory initiatives, and no one can actually really grasp how this violence plays out, but it is still maybe on a longer term, maybe vaguer, maybe less it's visible. visible. Uh, it is still violence, um, but I think and this. This then relates to the resistance because in the 70s, yeah, well, people really from also from, from, from people who were not living in the Northern Quarter, they just saw this violence going on and said, okay, we need to do something. Um, and that's not really the case today. Um, Marion from Aurau, even she said to us that um, until like one and a half years ago almost, she thought things were going fine in the Northern Quarter and only now she's realizing more and more shit and, but maybe we're too late. Well, and also incorporating these uh, resistance while well, already by creating things like Up From North, uh, Lab North, w w where you already incorporate like critical voices and such, but also by doing all these participatory projects where people who already have very little extra time to invest are investing within a framework that is created by the yeah. real estate business. Goedemiddag iedereen. Um, ja, we zijn heel blij om um, eigenlijk vandaag misschien als een eerste keer de overgang ook mee te maken van het feestcomité naar het uh, contactcomité. Uh, ik denk dat we in het verleden met ons feestcomité hier in de buurt, de Dantwerpse Steenweg, al fantastische dingen hebben gedaan. En ik kijk er naar uit om dat verder te kunnen zetten. Well, the music is made by Jens Boutery, my longtime friend and collaborator. Um, yeah, Jens is amazing. He composed several things. Uh, most of them were inspired by a, an old uh, resistance song from the 70s made with the people in the Northern Quarter. Which is also in the film. Which is also in the film. I think in the, like, in the conversations that we had with Jens before, there were two things. It was first this old song, like how can we reinterpret that song? Uh, and then there was the, this, this, this question again of the complexity, like how can, how can you also almost make like an anarchist sound of like different instruments that go together but then actually they yeah. <laughs> they don't go together anymore so this sort of this chaos in the in the music i think mm -hmm.